Jesus' name. We have nothing to do with it. The Romans killed Jesus. The Jews didn't kill Jesus. They want to give you somebody. The Romans killed Jesus. This is Paul Mooney. Pay attention. No, nothing went down in Rome. Just like here. We kill Kennedy. You can always tell when it's an inside job. There's too many stories. Was it two guns? Was it three? Was it a bone arrow? Was it a midget? Was it... There's too much going on. When it's outside, it's very clear who did what. Oh no, we can't look at the records until 5,000 years from now. It's always bullshit connected when it's an inside job. That English, that, that lady die shit, Inside, they killed that bitch. The queen, that dirty, murdering, ugly ass bitch. She did. <laughs> bitch. That is a hit. Prince Charles didn't want the body when it was alive. He sure broke his neck getting it when she was dead because he knew his man had killed her. He wanted to cover the shit up. And somebody with that high profile, ten fucking years later, they decided to have a fucking autopsy. And the conclusion is, the driver, her driver, listen, when you drive for royalty or the fucking government, they check your mama's pussy and your booty hole. <laughs> there are no surprises. That evil bitch did it. She stole all them diamonds. She stole from Africa, stealing, murdering bitch. Ugly bitch. <laughs> It was Paul Mooney, right? Paul Mooney, R.I.P. Paul Mooney. He just died, 79 years young. 79 years young, that's not a bad life. That's uh, it's a long life. That's three years over the median age, 76. He, 79 years of age, so great comedian. He's dead. The comedy world is going to take a hit, but Paul Mooney is dead. R.I.P. Paul Mooney. Who even could think this was possible? Good old Paul Mooney. What are we going to do without the great Negro Damas? Am I even allowed to say that? Negro, like colored? Like, what was this, 1950s? Ah, bah, I'm good. It's a bunch of malarkey, huh? Fucking malarkey. God, I hate that emperor. Negro Damas wrote the Chevy Chase and Richard Pryor, uh, the infamous word association, Saturday Night Live sketch. Paul Mooney, he once said that he was Richard Pryor's best friend. Which, I don't know, I could see that uh, Paul Mooney is the one that's paving the road for unapologetically, he's unapologetically black, which is, you know, good, be proud of who you are. He loved talking mad shit about white people. That was, frankly, Paul Mooney's job. Paul Mooney's job was to talk shit about white people. Now, now where are we going to get, you know, I guess we get all the perks, but he gets to speak his racialist mind. I don't know, I feel like you're, it's... Listen to, you get smarter from, you know, different perspectives. I, yeah, I could go on about that, but um, on and on about that topic. But frankly, Paul Mooney is funny. Paul Mooney was awesome. He was a proud black man, not afraid to not only talk about, you know, uh, white people, but also talk directly to the problems of our culture. I mean, he called out the queen, you know, pretty fucking directly. And what are we going to do? Just sit here while, <clears throat> you know, our princess... Diana was taken away. The people's princess was taken away from us. Oh, the driver, the, you know, paparazzi. It's everybody but the people in power. Okay. Does seem like, you know, uh, who killed Tupac? It seems like it's Suge Knight would be my, you know, number one prime suspect. So who killed Princess Diana? I would think that the queen would be my number one prime suspect, right? It's like who killed Barry Morphew's wife? It's probably... Barry Morphew, right? So, bye, fam, go. Uh, so, Negro Damas, Negro Damas, what are we going to do without Negro Damas? He's unapologetically black. We don't, who's going to talk mad shit about white people now? Uh, Kevin Hart, is that, I mean, so, I like Paul Mooney a lot. One of his most famous sayings of all time, one of his most famous quotes is that everybody wants to be an N-word and nobody wants to be an N-word. <laughs> Paul Mooney once said that, and it rings true. Let's listen to some more, Paul Mooney. Oh, her mama's ugly, her daddy's ugly, her son is ugly, her son's new wife looks like Dane Edna, that's her baby. They all are ugly. Queen Elizabeth looks like sheep shit in shallow ass water. <laughs> 
If she's the queen, what the fuck does the witch look like? <laughs>
Kevin Hart in response to Kramer in 2008. A little ironic, and maybe evolution, or I don't know, but in 2008, I think it's on Letterman, Paul Mooney is going to say that he doesn't want to hear or say the N-word anymore. He said he was the ambassador of the N-word, and he didn't want to hear or say it. After he heard Kramer saying it, he was just like, wow, that is, that is nasty. That is disgusting. That is ugly. And so, but Paul Mooney himself is also the same person that said saying the N-word made his teeth whiter, right? And in his whole comedy is about be this and N-word that. He loves saying it. He said he loves saying the N-word. He said it's just smooth and it rolls right off his tongue. He just loves saying the N-word. So, you're welcome. <laughs> Kaffir, this is an N-word in South Africa. So, Kaffir, I don't know. that Nobody knows it over here, but that's the N-word, right? But that doesn't roll off your tongue, right? That doesn't roll off the Kaffir. That's like all clumsy and shit. Am I, am I allowed to say Kaffir? I mean, over here, I think, not in South Africa, but over here, nobody knows what the fuck it means, of course. Ah, you Kaffir motherfucker. Um, okay. Cool, thank you. You're a Kaffir too. <laughs> What's up? So it's actually not the word so much to me, it's the tone, right? If you was like, you fuckity fuck, you motherfuckity fucking and fuckity fuck you, versus, ah, what's up, you fuckity fuck, hey, hey, my calf, all right? So is that the, is that the right way, is that the okay way to say kaffir with an A? My kaffir, kaffir please. <laughs> Everybody wants to be an N-word and nobody wants to be an N-word. Ah, oh, maroon. Paul Mooney said that whites terrorized blacks and made blacks tough, so black folks could handle 9-11, but now terrorism makes white people crazy because the TSA asked for my ID five times. The TSA asked for my ID five times. That put white people in the fucking nut house. They couldn't handle it. The TSA keep on taking my shoes off. Are you kidding me? Paul Mooney said that the Apollo showtime at the Apollo Apollo is black heaven. Imagine if Apollo standards were used for our nation's philosophy. Our government should be of and by and for the people. Yeah, three branches of government to prevent tyranny. Yeah, that's right. Woo! Referendum, initiative, recall. Oh, shit. Plus, big old fat bill of rights. You get rights. Everybody get rights. Yeah. A hundred rights. Let's get a hundred freedoms and rights. Hell yeah. Now, instead of letting you dumb motherfucking piece of shit public, you know, dumbasses vote for our president, why don't we just let 100 random party insider assholes in the electoral college do it instead? Boo. Boo. What the hell are you talking about? Paul Mooney said that golf courses remind him of plantations. He hates seeing them. Paul Mooney said that black is the new white. One of Paul Mooney's favorite jokes is a white person told him was this. Little white Timmy put black cake frosting on his face, and he said, look, Mom, I'm black. Well, his mom didn't like that at all, so his mother, little white Timmy's mother, slaps him, and he orders him to go tell his father. Tell your father what you just said and did. And so he goes in, he goes, look, Father, I'm black. And his father gets mad, and he slaps him. So then little white Timmy, and then he's, go tell your grandfather, of course, Grandfather, you know, the grandfather slaps him too, right? Just all he did was put cake frosting, black cake frosting on his face. Said, look, you know, look, mom, I'm black. Look, father, I'm black. Look, look, grandpapa, grandpapa, I'm black. Grandpapa, psh, psh, psh. Then the grandfather sends it back to his mother, and his mother goes, okay, little Timmy, so what did you learn? What did you learn, little white Timmy? Little white Timmy said, well, I've been black for five minutes, and I... Already? I can't stand you white people. R.I.P. Paul Mooney. R.I.P. With Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson was older than her. Mel Gibson looks like her grandfather. Tina still looks the same. She looks good. <clears throat> we lost Ike. You know we lost Ike. In the hospital, I beg for Tina, 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 bring her in here. I want to slap that bitch one more time. <laughs> Tina wouldn't go. Tina wouldn't go. Tina said, what death got to do with it? <laughs> and the Grammys made the mistake of calling Tina the queen. You know about it. Ooh, do 
you know who was there? You know who was there? Aretha. Aretha. That big bitch was pissed. She think it's a duplex. And just titty, 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 everybody. Titties and hats, titties and hats. She was pissed. I was there, I tried to help her. I said, Aretha, kill her. I feel like Paul Mooney is the Lenny Bruce for black folks. Lenny Bruce didn't always, wasn't 100%, but because he was all over the place and he talked about so much shit and he just fucking cussed all the goddamn time. It allowed for your artiste to come about and, you know. So R.I.P. Paul Mooney. R.I.P.